Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Indie Comics Review. This is the show where every week I review three indie comic books. If that's the kind of content you find interesting, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. So let's get started with this week's comics. The first book this week is Heavy Metal Drummer Number One. It is on the Behemoth label and is written by Kiefer Fendlow and Emiliano Pliskin, and it is drawn and colored by Luca Vasio. 1986 AD. Under the streets of Los Angeles freeze the seeds of a gruesome interdimensional conflict between order and chaos. Enter Dave, a junkie, heavy metal drummer, a guy whose life was about to get a whole lot shittier. Well, I gotta say, that's a pretty brief introduction to a pretty awesome book. Uh, this book, I tell you, this is my pick of the week. Uh, even though it's not this week, uh, I just got a big bunch of books from... Um, MyComicShop.com, and among them was this book and a lot of other indie comics. So I'm going to be focusing on those books for the next few weeks. Heavy Metal Drummer number one. This is a great looking book. This book, uh, I'll show you. This book looks um looks like a, a really sweet looking. It's like a little bit smaller than your average comic book. This is a this is a modern comic book bag or a Silver Age comic bag. And you can see that the book is a little bit a little bit smaller than your average comic book. But it gives it kind of a endearing look. Uh, it's it's really super colorful. It's, it's, it's flat tones to color. And I tell you, this book is uh, it's fantastic looking. But the gist of it is, it begins with uh, this band about to go on stage. And if you show the backstage uh, goings on, uh, the drummer is like, snorting a line of coke off of his the back of his hand. Uh, his bandmates are knocking on the door like, come on, get your ass out here, we gotta go on stage. And don't you mess up the way you did last time. So he counts down the band, the band starts playing, and you see all these visions of uh, what looks like interdimensional characters. And you think that's just, maybe this is the coke talking. Maybe he's just uh, hallucinating about uh, stuff in his mind that he's uh, imagining. But there's more to the story as it goes on. And simultaneously, um, there is um, some other goings on on another planet, on another, another dimension or somewhere in space, it says. And we see these, uh, these humans being fed upon by some sort, of, uh, some sort of life force. Okay, back to Earth. We see um, this, this sort of pod thing down in the sewers of the city in LA in the 1980s there's this these these rats around the pod thing and they're feeding like off the teat of this this odd looking substance okay the rats go up uh, out of the sewer into the alleys the rats run into a bunch of cats who are just a bunch of alley cats who are just having it out in the alley the cats kind of like have a what the fuck moment and they look at the rats and they get into it and the cats destroy the rats and the cats get infected with this substance whatever this is and th what happens is this substance works its way up the food chain and eventually it gets to human beings and how it gets to the human beings makes um makes the the, the thing kind of interesting there's not a lot of you know, groundbreaking stuff going on in this story, but it's just so fun to watch this story develop. Uh, it's the dialogue is good, um, the 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 art is is good. I mean, it, it's, it's got this, such an underground look to it. Nothing looks more punk and more underground than this book. Um, the creators have been working on this for a couple of years. It uh, turns out they've. They were talking about it online about how this is a, a, a big uh, love letter that they that they were uh, been planning to do for some time. At the end, it is not like a oh my god that's an awesome thing, but it's kind of like oh okay it's got kind of like elements of the invasion of the body snatchers uh, and of maybe they live even movies like that. So it's, it's got kind of a, a predictability to it. But I don't care. I'm, I'm totally in this book just for the joy ride, man. I mean, for $3.99, give me this every month, at least for these, these five issues. 
I'm 100% sold on Heavy Metal Drummer. I even got about three different covers. Uh, there was like a one in 3,000, or I should say um, a 3,000 uh, copy limited cover. Picked up one of those. This is a great looking book. Uh, if you like indie stuff, if you're into the, the underground scene, this is not something trying to uh, done by posers. And, like I'm, I'm all over the punk scene or anything, but it looks very authentic to me and uh, it, it's very enjoyable. Man, Behemoth, God love Behemoth, man. All hail Behemoth, especially on this book right here, man. Heavy Metal Drummer is something that I think anyone who loves indie comics, I think you can't miss this book. Pick up Heavy Metal Drummer wherever you can find it. The next book is Crash Pad number one by Gary Panter and is on the Fantagraphics label. Crash Pad is Gary Painter's psychedelic ode to the underground comics that inspired him. Creators such as Zaps R. Crumb, Victor Moscoso, and Robert Williams presented as a standard black and white with color covers underground comic book. Every new work by the legendary Panther is an event, and Crash Pad is an exhilarating contribution to the tradition of underground comics. Now, Crash Pad is another of uh, truly underground comic in a different way. And I guess Panther is a uh, could be could be considered part of the punk scene too, uh, right? A punk pioneer, if you will. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff. He's a, a cartoonist, or writer, um, illustrator, uh, painter, uh, even a musician. Sometimes he's done a lot of covers for a lot of albums, like for uh, Frank Zappa and um, and people like that. He was also one of the set designers for Pee Wee's Playhouse. So Panther's done a lot of awesome stuff in his career. Uh, and like the, the introduction says, every time he does a book, it's kind of an event. Um, Crash Pad, it says number one in the description, but actually there was another book called Crash Pad, I think a couple years ago. So this is kind of another volume, I guess, of, of Crash Pad. Uh, it begins with, uh, first of all, it kind of looks like he's the first story in the book is more of a peek inside of his sketchbook than it is an actual story. It seems a lot of stream of consciousness and just um, stuff that just flowed from his pen and his mind. And it's not really what one would call a cohesive story. So if that's the kind of thing that, that, that bugs you, then uh, this book might not be for you. There's definitely a sketchbooky kind of a feel to Crash Pad. In fact, it looks like he did the entire book with a, a crow quill dip pen, which is a really cool effect. This is something that really can't be emulated well with digital. And I'm being an old school artist, I'm sure it was a um, traditional medium that he used. Uh, the first story is pretty short, uh, if you can call it a story. And the next part that comes up, which is called Crash Pad. This was where it actually becomes kind of a, 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 a sequential story. And even though it, it, it itself is kind of a stream of consciousness kind of a thing, and it uh, basically the, the premise of it is a group of friends uh, driving a, a VW van are going out to have some food while they talk about this uh, big acid deal. They're trying to buy this uh, 2,000 hits of acid from a friend of theirs. And they're sitting in the diner and their friend comes in and they they just dropped some acid themselves. I guess they had some leftover acid uh, before the, the big buy. And the friend comes in, he's tripping balls too. And he's just like, hey, is everybody high yet? You know, and there's this like this really square dude, almost reminiscent of like the scene in Easy Rider when uh, uh, the boys came into the diner with uh, Jack Nicholson and and uh and Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper. And there was this like, you know, these these, <laughs> these squares in there that were really offended by him. This guy just couldn't let it go. He just had to follow them out of the out of the uh, out of the diner. He's gonna teach him a lesson. And it's just not really uh, a serious story. Cause it's just kind of like stuff that happens after they leave the diner. And it's more about them tripping on the acid and painters of Panther. You want to call him Painter? And Panther's artwork. And illustrating their their trip um, so it's not a, a really deep story but it's a uh, this is what the underground comics were pretty much all about the underground comics weren't so much about as 
there was a storytelling storytelling element to them, but it was also just about uh, the artists letting out whatever was on their mind, whatever was they felt like drawing. You know, it was just like the trippy page after trippy page, and you know that at the time was was super cutting edge. And and he's from that era, uh, at least he came a little bit after that era, but he was inspired by the artists of that era. Um, if you're not a fan of, of trippy drug art, that kind of thing, it's probably a pass for you. But if you are a fan of indie comics and you're open to indie stuff like this and you appreciate an artist like Panther, who is um, kind of a legend in his uh, in his field, I think it's worth a pickup. There'll probably be, I guess, another one coming out at some point, but it, it, I'm not sure. And this one was kind of slow coming out. Uh, this is one of those books I was waiting on for a while. It should have been out a, a few weeks ago, but I'm glad it finally came out because, um, you know, this has just been like a, a windfall for me when I when I get all these kind of books. I love indie stuff like this. This is just like what indie comic book making is all about. This kind of thing, and I, I enjoy storytelling. I enjoy uh, realistic art, but um, sometimes I just enjoy st I enjoy stuff like this. This is the kind of stuff you would find at the, an artist alley. Um, you know, no insult to to uh, to Panther because the you know, artist alley has lots of really good artists in the alley. Just that, you know, these are just artists who don't uh, do mainstream work. So, and th this is a, a book I think um, indie comics lovers, um, underground comics lovers such as myself, uh, if you love the art of uh, Crumb and uh, like from Zap Magazine. And from uh, all those good indie comics, you should probably pick up uh, Crash Pad. Uh, it's easily available. I think uh, my comic shop has it. And your local comic shop may have a copy of it too. So uh, check out Gary Panther's Crash Pad. The last book is in his own image, number one. And that is written and drawn by Gabrielle Schiavone. And is on the Source Point Press label. In a not too distant future, new technologies give birth to new ways to vent violent and aggressive instincts. Subjects without any legal protection as androids can be the victim of any nefariousness. But how long will man be able to exercise full control over the machine? This story is about the violent nature of the human being and deals with the unstable struggle between man, machine, and God, between the creator and the creature, made in his own image. Now, that's quite a statement about this book. Um, it begins with uh, what looks like this guy going to his uh, a high school reunion, and he's he's like he's going through this routine where uh, everybody says, "Oh, this guy looks different. He's he's changed a lot since he's been there." And then it takes a violent turn where it seems like the guy is uh, is just taking vengeance on people that uh, pissed him off as a teenager. Uh, there's like a, a shooting, there's, there's several acts of violence, and uh, what looks like is happening uh, in reality is actually a VR simulation, and we're we're shown uh, this person experiencing experiencing the the VR simulation, um, and also this other individual there who's looking for his own personal uh, experience. Uh, this person doesn't want to do VR; he wants to have. Uh, a lifelike android and it turns out that this guy is like this um, this real sick psychopath um, uh, sadistic son of a bitch and and he he wants to know if this preacher can suffer and that's the main thing he wants to know because he he enjoys inflicting pain and they show this the act of him just uh, inflicting pain on this this poor robot or this poor android, or whatever, and he's disappointed that she doesn't bleed, and he just has his way with her and goes through all kind of violent acts. Uh, it may be triggering for some people because even though it's an android that these things are happening to, who knows? Maybe this may be something that uh, you might want to consider if you want to read this book. Um, it actually is pretty well written. Uh, at some point, um, the android is uh, discarded and uh, through some other means, I won't go too deep into it, but it's kind of easy to figure out 
um, the Android will eventually looks like maybe have some revenge on this person, uh, but it doesn't take place in this book. It may be coming up. What I hope is that uh, this isn't just another uh, revenge type of type of thing. Uh, in the description, it says it's um, an examination of um, a man's relationship with God and with uh, himself and things like that. If this is truly an examination into the cruelty of man and uh, a more deeper subjects than just like, hey, you know, this machine got fucked up then it came back and kicked the ass of the guy that did it. Then it'll be a better book than um, if, if it's than if it's just like, you know, it, it's, or I should say if it, <laughs> If it isn't that kind of a book, it would be a better book. Uh, if it's more about uh, the causes behind sadism and cruelty and um, man's evolution into that stage, because um, I'd imagine this has been there's been sadists and and things like that, you know, for for eons, you know, way before there was any kind of computerization or anything like that. It's but uh, this has more to do with the um, the AI aspect and with the scientific aspect and the evolution of cruelty and, um, and sadism and stuff like that. So once again, not for everyone, but it, it could be interesting if it does take um, uh, a, a deeper delve, a deeper dive into the, this subject than just a revenge kind of a, a book. So... I'll probably give it another look at uh, another. The number two comes out, I think, at the end of this month sometime. So I'll probably check it out and um, at least see which direction it goes. Because it left off at a point where it could go either way. So let that, let that be your guide as to whether or not you want to check this book out or not. I personally will, but you may or may not want to. So that's it for this Indie Comics review. Um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'm going to have more stuff that came in with my big indie haul from last week, probably next week as well. And I'll probably try to squeeze in some, uh, at least one um, Artist Alley book as well. So thanks for stopping by. Be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I'm making another video. So until next time, I'll see you guys in the funny papers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.